Today, I'm very pleased to have with me Sergi, we'll get into that, it's a Catalan name, Sergi Martin, who teaches Spanish. Or is it Martin? No, Martin. <laughs> Martin, 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 yeah, Martin. Yeah, yeah. Sergi Martin, Sergi Martin, Sergi Martin, Spanish, and it's we're going to talk about languages because it's very interesting. Sergi is a Catalan speaker and of course a Spanish speaker from Valencia. We'll get into that, which is a bit of a variation of Catalan. Maybe we'll find out. And he lives in Prague, where of course they speak a language that's only spoken by I don't know if it's 10 million people, but we'll get into that as well. So, Sergi, welcome to my channel. And I want to talk Hello. about languages with you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure to me. Okay. So let me uh, 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 first of all ask you, uh, because a lot of people who uh, watch my channel uh, study mm -hmm. Spanish. And uh, so, and Spanish, of course, is a dominant world language. It's spoken by, I don't know, 500 million Four, people. 500 I, million. Yeah, yep. lots. And, <laughs> lots. And, and, and yeah, lots. Yeah. Uh, and so then we have Catalan, yes. which is spoken by, so on a European sort of level, it's not, it's not an insignificant language. I mean, there's like, mm -mm. there's more Catalan speakers than Finnish speakers, for example. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Seven million, mm -hmm. or what's the number? I don't know exactly, because uh, right. I'm just a speaker. I just uh, speak Valenciano, Catalan, whatever you, you want to call it. Right. Um, and I think uh, it's uh, between seven and nine million. Okay. No, exactly. Yeah. So, of, the next uh, question is, yeah. so you look at the map and it says they speak Catalan on the Balearic Islands, they speak Catalan in Valencia, then you read somewhere that the Valenciano say, no, 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 it's not Catalan. It's something Ooh. else, and uh, so what's this? What's the deal? How similar are those languages? Okay, okay. Before we start uh, talking about this, uh, we are, we have to say that uh, some haters will come here to, and they will kill me. <laughs> Whatever okay. I say, uh, it's something very risky talking okay. about this. Okay, my point of view: how I uh, I learned it. I learned Catalan is the is the name of the language, right? And then we have uh, diver, different uh, how do you say variations variations yeah. of uh, of Catalan spoken maybe in Catalonia, but maybe in different parts in, uh, of Catalonia is different. Mm -hmm. Same happens uh, in Valencia or in Mallorca, right? So the Catalan spoken in uh, in the Balearic Islands is called mm. Mallorquin, and the mm -hmm. Catalan spoken in uh, in Comunidad Valenciana is the real name of right. uh, of the of the autonomy is uh, Valenciano. But then, some years ago, uh, some politicians, my, I repeat, it's my point of view, right. some politicians uh, came to add a language called uh, Valenciano because right. they created uh, an academy to study the, Valen the Valencian language. Right. I learned that everything is Catalan. We understand each other perfectly, no problem. I've lived for 10 years in Barcelona. Right. Yeah, and uh, and one year in uh, in Mallorca. So right. okay, so you're in a good position. So for you, if you speak yeah. to someone, if you speak your Valenciano, and you yes. speak to uh, someone from uh, Girona, yes, and someone from Mallorca, yes. all of you, ha no effort, no struggle, you just communicate. Yes, maybe some small. Stuff we will have a little bit of uh, struggle, but but nothing nothing that couldn't oh, okay. let us understand each other. No, absolutely not. And no Andorra problem. Andorra is the same, right? Andorra it's a, it's a something like special because Andorra is the only uh, the only country independent country uh, which uh, whose if I can say that. Sorry if my English yeah, is yeah, not no, working no, very well. Absolutely yeah. good. Yeah. That uh, Catalan is the is the official language, the only right. official language uh, okay. of the country. Okay. So Catalan is spoken in uh, in Andorra, and oh, okay. it's something very uh, like peculiar, right. because here in Prague uh, they have a, a part of the of the university of uh, of Prague, right. where they teach Catalan, mm -hmm. and it's sponsored by the government of Andorra. Oh. So here <laughs> you can learn Catalan for free. Okay. I have a student of uh, of uh, Catalan. We do just a conversation, but uh, and I know the teacher and my wife started studying Catalan with with uh, with this uh, the teacher mm -hmm. uh, Andreu, mm -hmm. and he he teaches there. And I went there once just to say hello to to the school, and uh, it's nice. 
You know, we have Catalan at Link. We have Catalan at Link. So, really? Uh, yes. Ooh. So yeah, I should, should get your wife on to uh, to uh, Link. Study the many stories in Link. I have not studied Catalan. Uh huh. How difficult would it be for me to learn Catalan? And would there be? And this is the other question. We're talking about say interference between similar languages. Like I find yes. that when I speak Portuguese, people complain that I'm speaking Portuñol. Because I speak Spanish much, much better than Portuguese, so that the, yeah. the Spanish, it controls my pronunciation in Portuguese, some of the words that I use. It's very difficult to keep it Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So if a person learns Catalan, how easy yeah. or difficult is it to keep the two languages separate? Uh, well, uh, I think there are, in my experience, there are always interferences. It's mm -hmm. uh, absolutely normal, and you have to cope with it, and, uh, and that's it. Mm. But uh, the good thing is that uh, they are not that far away. Uh, so you can learn one language and quite easily, quite uh, fast, you can learn and start speaking fluently in, uh, in the other language. Right. And you will have interferences. Mm -hmm. my, my wife's uh, example. Uh, right. We have lived for 12 years in Spain, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Catalan-speaking uh, places, Valentino, right. Mallorquin, whatever. And uh, she still mixes sometimes some words. Right. 12 years living there and speaking right. fluently when, when she arrived. So, right. I mean, it's, but, it's but normal, you know, you but it's fast. I mean, yeah. yeah, but you know, interference, like I, I have uh, done business with say Germans and Swedish people and there is interference from their language in English because yes. even people who speak very, very well, Germans will always say, I, ha I have been living in Canada since many years, which is incorrect. You have to say <laughs> for many years. Yeah. Zeit, yeah. Zeit, they, they do it. And I can cite mm. similar examples in Swedish. So even people mm. who are very fluent, there's always interference from other languages. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. once you're into more than mm. one language, you're going to have interference, you're going to have errors, you're going to have problems, yeah. that's normal. But I think, yeah. I think that uh, the, the point of view of the modern language uh, speaking and learning is more like, uh, like open. For example, right. in Catalan now, it, it's more like... Every single variation of the language is accepted. Uh -huh. So the way I speak in my uh, town right. in Valencia is very different than the way that they speak in, let's say, in Menorca, in right. the Balearic Islands. Right. So absolutely different. But both are correct, are right. Right. Yeah. So right. so I mean, we can make some some changes. We even in in my uh, Valenciano, in my Catalan, we have some interferences from from Spanish. Right. So. Uh, a foreign speaker, I mean, right. it's absolutely acceptable that he can make some interferences and, and there is no problem with that. If the communication is okay and you can understand, for me, no problem with that. Now, mm. what about the... To what extent do people who live in areas where, call it a minority, it's not a minority language, but lesser, call it, it's not even yeah. lesser, but languages <laughs> with fewer speakers, okay? So okay. do, do people in Barcelona, foreigners, or for that matter, non-Catalans, who live in Barcelona, do they take the trouble to learn Catalan if they arrive? Mm. I'm not talking about somebody who went to school there, uh, a mm. Spanish person, say, who, who yeah. was born there, went to school there, but someone who arrives from uh, Madrid uh, to Barcelona, is he going to bother learning Catalan in general? Well, uh, there is a problem, and it's a, a political conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a political conflict, political problem, and it's uh, not easy to get rid of these uh, politics. But I think once you get rid of these uh, politics, there is absolutely no problem. I have many uh, foreigners, many friends, mm -hmm. who don't speak a word of Catalan, and they are, have been living for, not since, for uh, years, right. I mean, maybe 15 years in Barcelona, not speaking a word of, uh, of Catalan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no problem with that. Mm -hmm. yeah? But it's true. There is a political issue and, right. uh, and it, it's like, I mean, but, but it happens. Uh, if you go to, to Madrid and you are Catalan, you could have problems with somebody like uh, narrow-minded or, or, oh, okay. or whatever. But every Catalan speaker speaks Spanish, but not every Spanish speaker in Barcelona speaks Catalan. That's it. So, That's it. so it would be therefore the, it would be the exception if if someone yes. say a businessman moves to Barcelona for his work yep. or mm -hmm. her work, it's it's the exception that they would go to the trouble of learning Catalan. 
Yes. Or what? Yes. So they would go to the mm. store, the shopkeeper, let's say, and uh, they would just speak Spanish, and the shop speak, shopkeeper no would reply in Spanish. How no about problem. in uh, in Prague, yeah. like in the Czech Republic? You have mm. foreigners who live there, the foreign community there. Do they bother learning Czech? Uh, yes, yes, they they do, but uh, they don't need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, here, uh, I mean, you are in the... Uh, how is it? The geographical center uh, center of Europe. Right. So it's a country where uh, here live like ten and a half million of uh, inhabitants. Mm -hmm. So uh, and Europe is has like three hundred millions of inhabitants right. or whatever. Right. So they have to learn another language if they want to communicate with the majority of their uh, surroundings. Right. So here is very accepted and very usual that people speak uh, English or another language. Mm -hmm. So I have friends living here who speak like Czech. Uh, pff, let's say that they, they can, no, they can say absolutely uh, uh, a, lang uh, a sentence in, mm -hmm. in Czech, and they live and they get along and uh, absolutely right. no problem. Yeah, I but, mean, yeah, yeah. But that's too bad. The, that's too bad. Yeah, you know, but yeah. speaking the language is uh, something very different. I mean, it's a it's a step forward, Absolutely. and it is something that helped me a lot. So I started coming coming uh, here with my uh, with my uh, uh, girlfriend. Right, now, she's my wife, mm -hmm. and uh, I met her friends, family in English, mm -hmm. some in in Spanish, and after a couple of years, I came back and I started using my first words in Czech. Mm -hmm. So they were surprised, like, wow, Sergi, you can speak Czech, you can say four words, like, I need a beer or something like that. Right. <laughs> I need to go to the toilet. And it encouraged me to learn more and more. Right. So for me, it was like, wow, my ego right. went poof, That's skyrocketing. so important. So, Sergi, you, of course, you're located in Prague yeah. and you teach Spanish online, uh -huh. Sergi Martin Spanish. Uh, and your audience is, your audience is both in Prague, yeah. but also presumably around the world because you're on the internet and we're going to leave a link to your channel. Okay. But tell us a bit about your methodology, mm -hmm. uh, what you offer on your channel and so forth. Yeah. Okay. In my channel, uh, what I offer are uh, lessons, Spanish lessons, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, mostly on the street or while, uh, when, when I'm traveling. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I like to, to have some uh, context while teaching something. So my idea is, mm -hmm. that, okay, I am here, I'm doing this stuff, and uh, how can I connect this stuff to teach something in, uh, in Spanish? Yeah. Uh, this is when you are traveling in Spain? Uh, wherever, wherever. Wherever. Yeah. Wherever, wherever okay. I, I go. I have lessons in, uh, in uh, Iceland, I have lessons mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, Cyprus, in mm -hmm. India, I have several lessons in India, for example. Yeah. I want to go to you're Canada. To, yeah. Okay, but you're speaking to Spaniards. Uh, no. You're speaking in Spanish. Sometimes. No, some, no. Well, maybe okay. yeah, in Istanbul. In Istanbul, I was uh, right. looking for Spanish-speaking uh, people, and uh, right. I interviewed them. But uh, mm -hmm. just that, uh, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, once uh, it was raining in India, yeah, and I mm -hmm. wanted to say uh, an expression we use, like it is, uh, está lloviendo a cántaros, would be something like it's mm -hmm. raining cats and dogs, wouldn't you say? Yeah, cats and yeah. dogs, yeah. Uh, so you just say that, but it happened that I was in India. So for me, mm -hmm. it's not that I'm always at home doing videos in a, in a studio or something like that. No. Right. No, just uh, I go to the street and for me it's more mm -hmm. um, amusing uh, that way. So you have videos with Spanish content, therefore, yes. plus you also teach online. Yes. So those are the two, the two functions. Yes. Okay. Mm. And I mean, we have a lot of people who, who are working on Spanish and uh, they should uh, perhaps go and visit you and see, see what you have there. Sure. Um, is there a lot of interest in Spanish, say, in the Czech Republic? Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good thing. Uh, when I started uh, living here, it was like uh, five and a half uh, years ago, uh, mm -hmm. I came here to, to live. Uh, I saw that uh, most of the people uh, say that uh, English is the language they need to, to work. So everybody mm -hmm. studies mm -hmm. English here. Almost everybody right. speaks uh, English. But then they have uh, German uh, to do business. Mm -hmm. yeah? German is right. the business language. And uh, Spanish right. is the holiday language. And I said, <laughs> right. okay, mm, we are just the holiday language. I mean, something they don't need. Yeah. But in the end I said, right. okay, 
if they want to learn something to have fun, so to go on holiday, right. it means that they yeah. are willing to do it. It's not like, like uh, right. German, they have exactly. to learn it. Yeah? Right. So uh, the interest is great. So everybody loves uh, okay. Spanish. Mm -hmm. I, I think people associate Spanish with fun, music, yeah. food, yeah. travel, mm. whether it be in Spain or, or Latin America. Mm. Okay, well, Sergi, it's been fun. We did a long interview in Spanish as well, which is on your channel. Yeah. And uh, so, I uh, hopefully we will meet again. Okay, sure. Uh, maybe in Prague. I got to work on my check. Maybe in come Prague. I, I have to go to Canada too. I have never been Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You I want to go come there. here. Maybe. Maybe I'll need a Catalan teacher too. Sure. <laughs> what if, you, if we do a live video, some, something on the street, like saying, yeah, hello, <laughs> it could be nice. Sure. Here, oh, you come here, there. we'll do a live video. Yeah, or sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sergi. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Steven. Bye-bye.